My name is Lamorna Ash, and my first book is called Dark Salt Clear, Life in Cornish Fishing Town. I really struggled with coming up with a title for Dark Salt Clear. I spent actually quite a lot of sleepless nights desperately trying to rearrange words to do with fish and blue and the sea and kind of constantly struggling over it. And then a friend encouraged me to go back to my reading, which is um, the books that I read informed my writing a lot. So I went back to Elizabeth Bishop's Collected Poems and there's a poem there called At the Fish Houses and it describes the way that knowledge is like the sea in that it's dark, salt, clear, moving, utterly free. And I thought that was such a beautiful way of describing what the sea is and poetic. So I asked my editor and he was like, mm, this might work. Um, and I eventually managed to convince him. I studied anthropology uh, as a master's degree at UCL and part of that master's degree was you had to go and spend a month researching somewhere and I had all these grand ideas about where I wanted to go um, and places far away where I didn't understand the language and then I kept thinking that you lose so much in translation that I'd be missing at understanding what the, the people that I'd be meeting were. And my mum is from Cornwall, my granny and most of the female line in my family. And I thought, well, I actually, it's a place that I know really well, but I know it as a tourist. And I really wanted to go back there. And I thought, I know that I've got some family that were fishermen back in the past. So I thought I'd go to Newlyn. And so I spent a month just interviewing every fisherman I could in pubs and going out on deep sea trawlers and crabbers and ring netters and every kind of boat I could. Uh, and then after that, I found the whole thing such a rich experience that I went back for a further couple of months. And... I think that anthropological style stuck where I really wanted to just sit and listen and hear stories and slowly build up a portrait of a community that's a fishing community that way. Lockdown has been a very strange time for a book to come out. Uh, there was so much that I was excited about in terms of having a launch and bringing people together and being able to celebrate something that has been the front of my mind for the last three or so years. And so I think initially I was quite sad that I didn't get to do that. I didn't get to go and see it in bookshops. But I think on the other side of things, it's been a real blessing to get to hear people's responses to the book. I think it's, it's brought me a sense of connection at a time when I've often felt quite lonely during this. So to get messages from people on Facebook who I, who I don't know, um, sort of women in their 70s and 80s saying, I actually don't know if I'll go back to Cornwall, but reading your book has made me feel closer to it. That felt, messages like that mean such a huge amount. Um, and it also starting to build that community of different nature writers out there and talking to them about kind of next steps and what they're doing um, and feeling that sort of community that, that is fostered around writing about travel and nature has been a really wonderful thing. The section that I wanted to read from is a chapter about the geology of Newland. I spent a day with a geologist called Roger who he had traveled all over the world but always comes back to Newland and his his father had worked on the quarries in Newland as well and he showed me the way that geology has informed Newland and then at the same time told me stories about his own life and they were personal and filled with a lot of tragedy and I asked him afterwards if it was okay to write his story as well as the story of the geology because they seemed so beautifully linked in the way that he spoke and he said to me, I don't know how you're going to understand Newland if you don't have these personal stories. Um, and so gave me permission to use his story, which I am so grateful for. At the very end of the prom, on the edge of the town, sea facing green, stands the Newland Fisherman Memorial. Unveiled to the public in 2007, the 10 foot high bronze and granite figure cast by local sculptor Tom Leeper commemorates all those fishermen from Newland lost to the sea since 1980, over 20 in all. A thin, dull green patina has already formed over the fisherman's exterior, giving him a weather-worn look. Though dressed in the simple fisherman's attire of oil skins and a beanie, there is something of a warrior in the statue. 
at night when he is lit up from below, causing shadows to fly up his face and highlight his strong features. He has something of the Riaki warriors, the two life-sized Greek bronze ca bronzes cast between 460 and 430 BCE, discovered accidentally off the coast of Italy and dragged from their sea graves during the 1970s. Impervious to the water, each aspect of their muscular forms has been perfectly preserved. It is difficult to believe the warriors, known simply as statue A and B, come from another civilization. A, with the more youthful stance, is thought to have been sculpted first, and B, the older warrior, with a softer posture and gentler facial expression, 30 years later. It is hard to place the age of Newland's bronze fisherman. His features are simple, and rather than wrinkles, the sculptor has roughened the metal to make it look as if his whole face is alive and in motion. Between his hands, the fisherman holds taut a line of rope that ends in a loop at either end, ready to cast. At first, I had assumed from his stance, left foot ahead, the momentum carrying him forward, that he was casting the line out into the water. But I've been looking at the sculpture all wrong. The man is not casting out, but coming home, ready to throw the noose of rope over the harbour wall and tether his boat to the land. In front of the statue this morning leans a man with his back to the promenade, his gaze following that of the fisherman as he looks fixedly towards the horizon. This is Roger, a retired geologist from Newlyn, who called me earlier this morning to say we should meet here at noon so he can show me the long history of Newlyn. Cornwall has always been an integral way of how I think about myself. There's something about naming someone Lamorna that means that I have to explain to people how that, what that name means the entire time. People often think it's like Italian or Spanish and kind of say it with this sort of like Lamorna. And I, have to, I say, no, it's, uh, it's actually from Cornwall, it's from the UK. Uh, and in doing so, I kind of constantly remember that my mum named me Lamorna in order to feel closer to the place that she left when she was 17, when she moved down to London. Uh, so Cornwall has always felt to me like a kind of ho a kind of a heart home in a way. Uh, I would go there every Easter and summer to stay in my granny's house um, and then my great grandmother lived next door as well, which is in Lalant. Uh, and Lalant has always felt like the place, for me it's felt like kind of going home and a slowing down. I'll see you at North Cornwall Book Festival.